Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Pillars of Eternity 2. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today in the Shrine of Magrin. Magrin? It's... we're here. And, uh... This is Baythor. Rathun? Baythor Rathun? I didn't get to read the second name. Ah. Anyway. A Rathun warrior stands tall even among his giant brethren. With a stern sweep of his hand, he addresses the soldier at his side. The Brenthis tarries for too long, yet only she is fit to fire the shrine. Go and ensure that she returns readily with the ancient. It would be my honor, Bathor. Return in victory, Rekir. Yes, Bathor. And remember... The giant sweeps his gaze in your direction. When the warlord spots you, his shoulders stiffen, and he reaches for the mace strapped to his back. You are a bold one to attack us in our own seat of power. Well, thank you. I hope you are prepared to die here, for I will soon prostrate you on the altar of Margaret and burn you for her glory. Uh, let's see. Your words let me pass in order to speak with Elthas. That's... It's not really true. I best do your kind before. Let's try. Let's kind of try and go for the first one. I've no quarrel with you, Bathor. I'm here only to speak to Elthus. Elthus deserves death, not words. The Defiler God has brought war to Ash and Maw in revenge against Margaret and her Athun. The Warlord regards you hotly, fire sweat dripping down his neck. His surrounding warriors clang their weapons against their chests or the floor, clamoring for blood. What is your relation to Aethus, if not to act with him against Margren? Yes, I... well, I would like to get rid of the whole lot of them, to be fair. Uh, can I say that? Hmm, let's see. There's a lot of options here, so... Bareth wills that I intervene with Aethus. Yeah, but I don't like Aethus, so... or rather, Bareth, or both. The... dead bastard crossed me, and I'm going to make him pay for it. Okay, that's not... I'm not really sure if they will like that argument. That's more a uh, uh, Wurika-style argument right there. I couldn't care less if Elthus snuffs every one of you. I need only to discern his aim within the dead fire. Uh, my motives are mine to know and mine alone. Elthus stole a part of my soul. I need it back. And Hiccup. I like that option. Uh, I've come... I come to ask him about his intentions within the den that fire. That seems rather weak, uh, and also probably not gonna convince him. But yeah, I said this before. I said that I I've come for my soul. I'm gonna stick to that. That's uh, that's what I'm gonna focus on right now. I don't think my character has any has necessarily any huge motivations to bring down the pantheon of uh, of the of Eora. Eora is the name of the planet. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, the pantheon of Eora. Uh, yeah, let's say that he stole my soul. I need it back. Then you two have cause against Aethus, as we do. We are prepared to assault Aethus at the base of the moor. The warlord gestures to the shrine of Magran behind him. The shrine will lower us to the sacred Ardra pillar, where the embodied god now gluts himself. Let me through. I'll speak with Aethus and convince him to leave this place. Yeah, let's go with that. Even if I believed you, I cannot do such a thing. He sh I I know what you're gonna say. It's all fine. It's all totally fine. He shakes his head. His eyes burn fiercely intent. We guard the sacred depths of the mall. None may freely enter. Oh, okay. Well, that's a different thing. I thought he couldn't... He was gonna say, I can't light this thing. No, I can. Thus the shrine lies dormant, locked without the talk of Bethacton. Uh, okay, well, I guess he just said it. He shoves his shoulders back with pride. Our High Priestess, the Brenthis is the Torque's rightful bearer, but she has yet to return to the keep. Yeah, I found your Brethis. She's dead. Then it is as I feared, and as I felt. Her flames have been extinguished. I do not share the Brenthis's ability to commune with Margaret, but I must believe the Goddess would will us to fight. We must make a final stand. I have the torque. To returning victory from the lair of the ancient. I misjudged you. You are one of a kind among Kith. What became of the ancient? Draw the fellas. 
triumph will be nigh impossible without her. That's a good reason for me to not have killed her. That's a good thing. Wh uh, what makes you think something happened to her? Face beat red, Shori chokes, bounding on her chest as she struggles for air. For what do you look at me? Look to the captain, I say. Takeo glances away, his cheeks flushed. The warlord tilts his head as if considering the true meaning of your companion's reaction. Growing distrustful, he tightens his grip on his mace. You will answer me, Kith, without trickery or lies. Oh, that's an interesting response. I think... I have no idea what they... Hmm. The dragon has forsaken you. Yes, she has. But that doesn't mean she's not going to fight. No, wait. It does mean she's not going to fight us here. Or w fight with us here. But it, she might fight with us later on in the game. That's, at least that's what I thought might happen at the time. But, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, the dragon has forsaken you. He falls silent, the scrawlings on his skin flaring hotly. Indeed. I feared the worst when the Brenthys failed to return with the beast. We've no choice. Despite the odds, we'll attack without either strength. He shakes his head, the motion grave. If this is to be our last stand, we must prepare ourselves, either for victory or for sacrifice. Lest Margaret forsake us for our failures. You've earned the right to fire shrine with the talk of the other flame. But we cannot join you as yet in facing the defiler. Should have been re-recorded. Because <laughs> the voice actor didn't didn't uh, say what was there. You called to me for a fire god. Like she'd rather see you die struggling than offer help. Oh yeah, that's Magrin alright. And that's the least of her problems. What do we have over here? Massive chains hold the weight of the shrine's conveyable platforms. And we got a bunch of these guys. So we didn't need to kill them, which is kind of good. We don't gain experience from killing them. So, yeah. You stand before the shrine of Magran, goddess of flame and war and trials and other things as well. Lifting your eyes, fiery motes begin to streak across your vision as you stare into the imposing cast of her likeness. Oh, she's in there. I didn't... Yeah. For the span of a single breath, everything falls eerily silent. The Rathun behind you fade away. Flames to either side of you flicker higher, dancing without sound. But the heat is real, licking at your skin. Then metal groans as Magrin's statue bends her head to you in greeting. Washer, the time does not allow for niceties. Her words flow like lava from her lips, like the trails that burble hotly from her eyes. Even now, Aethys gains strength from the spire. What progress have you to report? I haven't yet spoken with Aethys. Make haste, should you wish to distract our enemy during my preparation for war. She leans forward, the copper of her corded arms gleaming from the blustering flames. She tugs her sword free from her plinth, and the entire s shrine shudders with heat. Though now, maybe a revised directive would be wise. Presently, I shall erupt this volcano, and with it, consume Aethys. I suggest you retreat if you at all value your mortal form. I need more time to reach Elthus. I can give you only the moments more it takes me to fully fire the depths of this maw. After that, I will not stay the assault. Even for you. Fare thee on, Watcher. My condolences, should you die. She inclines her head once more in a stalwart farewell. An avatar of the goddess flashes over the imposing statue before you. As the image fades, her absence leaves the... Her absence leaves the shrine cold and deathly silent. So I am interacting with a statue. A statue of Magran towers above you. Bloodied and battle-ready, the goddess clutches both sword and shield. At the base of the statue, a rectangular iron... Iron-slated... No, iron-slatted iron altar rests between two unlit braziers. And I'm going to examine first the slattered, sorry, the slatted top of the altar has been hammered silver water smooth, except for a single circular gro groove notched deep into the center of the slab. Charred bits of metal, leather, and bones are piled in the interior of the circular groove, 
the remains of prior offerings to the goddess. And I'm going to place the torque on the altar. The braziers on either side of the altar flare to life, red-hot flames shooting high before settling into a steadier, softer burn within the bowels. Or bowls, or whatever. Lava eddies beneath iron grating in the floor, heating the soles of your feet while the statue herself seems to wake, metal groaning, rasping as the shrine moves. And I lost the torque of Burk of Earth Earth. I wasn't using it, was I? I hope I wasn't. I am absent-minded absent enough that I would have equipped it. <laughs> as the statue... Uh, wait, it's the same one. At the base of the statue, a rectangular... Yeah. So I can examine the altar wedged in... Oh, yeah. Uh, the torque of blazes in uh, with arcane power. Grasping the torque now would surely sear through both armor and skin, and I'm going to descend into the depths of Ashen Maw. With a squeal of metal against metal, the entire floor drops a stomach lurching five feet. Chains clang like the toll of a bell as they catch, pounding against the time-worn gears, and then the shrine begins steadily lowering into the maw. As the shrine cranks lower into the maw, Elthus's colossal Adra carved dome, neck, and shoulders slowly emerge into view. This close, the god rises up like a mountain, larger than you ever remember having seen him. Energy vibrates from his massive body, and a cacophony of mutterings and shouts from the souls whirling within it slam, or slams, the cacophony does, into you, nearly knocking you from your feet. We're not in immediate dialogue, which is interesting. Okay, let me just make sure. So uh, the, the torque would be somewhere in here. I didn't equip it. No, I didn't. We have a new soundtrack too. I know this, this line though, because I've been listening to the soundtrack online. Hmm, smaller than I expected. Have you ever seen anything so awe-inspiring? Behold the power of my god. Shori. He's gonna kill us all. You realize. This thing is like... Holy balls. And naturally, this is the same statue that we saw in uh, Odd Nua. A statue that I believe has been retconned to, to not be what it was supposed to be. I'm not actually sure. I think he might have just opportunistically, you know, gotten the statue and just be like, Ah, there's an address statue over here. I'm going to take over it. So maybe it wasn't retconned. It was just done like that. There's no interaction here, so I suppose it's just being close. Watcher, I wasn't sure you'd make it. But there is enough of you in me to grasp that you had a better chance than most. Some would say it's because you have a strong soul. Great deeds come easily to one so spiritually blessed. Or have you become great because of what has been thrust upon you, Watcher of Cadnua, Herald of Bereth, Hound of Aethys? Oh my god, you, you, you really, I mean, I'm... This can't... I see you, Shoti. I am glad that we could meet, even if it is under quite unpleasant circumstances. This is really happening, right? Gon, your humble priestess is before you. Please, tell me what you require of me. How do I save more lost souls than I can carry in one lifetime? Face bright red, sweat beating her brow. Shoti stumbles precariously closer to the edge. Lantern rattling, she catches herself, a mere moment before she would have toppled over. I know that you have undertaken a noble mission, but I will tell you what I told the Watcher. You need not fear for the lost souls of this world. As for you, Watcher, why is it you believe you have made it this far? I... <laughs> 
If he thinks the uh, sum up of our conversation before was that I need not fear for the lost souls, of, so, lost souls of this world, he's sorely mistaken. That was not the sum up of the conversation. Now, I understand why he would think it is, but he super wasn't. Well, he left me with more questions than, than answers, to be fair. But that's the nature of a conversation like that. I hope... Well, I don't know if this one is going to leave us with uh, more questions, too. Why is it that I came this far? I don't know. Whatever reason, I'm still standing. It is in my soul. Each of us simply does the best we can. I've had enough of this. I followed you into this damned volcano to get some answers. <laughs> so I got some questions answered. Uh, I like that. I'll go with that. Good fortune and good people have carried me the whole way. I'd be nothing without. I'd be nothing without them. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that. Yeah, I've enough of this. Answer me, goddammit. There, there is the fire of Kith that we fear. A fire that burns beneath a god's judging gaze and does not sputter, does not flicker. But you have come a great distance for answers. What would you ask of me, Watcher? That we have. And I got a request. Down here. God, look how full my lantern is. I've been harvesting day and night for you, my god. Lantern rattling. Sickle gripped so tight her knuckles are white. She waves her arms over her head as she shouts. She's going to be sorely, sorely let down. Huh. I don't actually know the personality of Aethas. I don't think we do. I don't, it's impossible to know in the first game. Because he's not there. Huh. I wonder what is going to happen. My dear Shodi. I do not mean to diminish your presence here, but this is a question that the Watcher needs to answer. Yep. She alone was tasked with pursuing me. The gods have placed her in this fire. It is only right that we speak together now. I need to know why you've come back. You need to know? Or Bereth? Or the gods. I need to know. It seems someone else needs to know. One who has held me to the flames once before. Do you mean Magrin? Of course. Magrin fears what I will do, just as she feared what I would do in the Deerwood. Okay, so he's, in, he's not omniscient, which is important. He doesn't... And he's also not very insightful. Not necessarily, anyway. Uh, he, well, he's, he's speaking from a point of disadvantage in regards to knowledge of the conversations that we had with Magrin. Uh, he, he doesn't expect her, I don't think. So we can use that to our advantage when we talk to him. More importantly, though... More importantly... Um, I, want, I wanted to say that Magrin... Magrin held him to the flames once before. This is a reference to what happens before the first game, uh, the War of Defiance. No, no, not the War of Defiance. That's the Independence War. The uh, I don't actually know the name of the war. The war where uh, Red Saras invades Deerwood in the first game, or before the first game, where he leads, or I guess somebody possessed by him, or rather somebody... Yeah, definitely somebody possessed by him. In the first game, it's not completely clear if Wade Wynn was possessed by him, but it is. I think it's confirmed that he was possessed. Also, it, is, it was absolutely most certain that he was. I guess it, you could write it out uh, with a sequel and just pretend he wasn't, but I, I think he's saying, he's confirming it right now, actually. Um, but, yeah. Actually, I think it is. I think this is the confirmation that uh, Wade Wynn was indeed uh, possessed by Elthus, or the avatar of Elthus, however you want to put it. But this time is different. This time... There is no power on Aora or in all of hell to stop me. Understand that what I'm saying is neither a boast nor a challenge. It is the clearest statement of truth I can give you. Give Bereth, in the hopes of dissuading you from taking actions that may harm others. Says the one who's killed thousands walking from the deer wood to the dead fire. Yeah, that's that's the that's the that's the way that we could uh, 
hold him accountable, or the, the reason we could hold him accountable for all that he's done in that other line that we, I didn't choose before. But I still, I'm, fo I'm super focused. I mean, the people who are dead are dead. I need to, I mean, I need to go from here on out. And in fact, they're not dead. The souls are in there, and that's another issue. I'll find a way to stop you is what I want. But what are you going to do is what I want to know. Force gods and mortals alike to open their eyes to one another. It seems my sister does not like the sound of that. Quit dancing, dancing around the question. A fair request. I suppose your time is more limited than mine. I want to return the gods to our original purpose. And to allow mortals to worship us, or ignore us, for what we are, not what we pretend to be. Shodi gasps sharply. For once, too stunned to blurt out a response. Her eyes are wild, with too much white showing, when she glances from Aethys to you. Whatever you're doing, there's gotta be a better way. When I entered Widewin, I did so with the intention of illuminating the history of Angoith. That's the civilization that created the gods, including him. That's... he... If he is a... he's not a single person. I mean, he's made up of multiple souls. So I guess he is a single person, but, you know, made up of multiple souls. Um, but, yeah, that's that's where they come from. Uh, it is... An, uh, this game already has to answer for... The gods are not real! In the first game, and in this game as well. And now it's raising, raising another distinction here. Um, the original purpose of the gods... And the original purpose was to make things work properly, was to sort of optimize the, the work of the souls, as far as I can tell. Maybe other things, other things too, uh, especially with like people like Helia and Ondra, where they they have their their domains are the sea and the sky and all that sort of stuff. So I like they were supposed to be guardian servants of the earth, sort of. Um, but what they pretend to be is a weird thing. What do they actually pretend to be? I don't... I, and I'm asking this, and I know the game is never going to answer that. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I don't know that, evidently, but... I... I'm most certain that th this is a throwaway line. Because I... It's, it's very easy to write that while meaning what people think we are. So his line should be, and to allow mortals to worship us or ignore us for what we are, not what they think we are, currently. Think we are. So it's just a, ma a matter of revealing their true nature. If that is the case, then I couldn't care less. It's absolutely irrelevant what their true nature is. As it, because it goes back to, the gods aren't real nonsense in the first game. It's a freaking huge statue in front of me. No, nope, it's not real. I'm dreaming. It's I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. Anyway, uh, let's keep keep going uh, and hope that he does in that we do indeed build something out of that one. Cause uh, I kind of want to side with him. Maybe the gods do pretend to be something else that they are not. I don't know, but if they do, I am not aware of who they truly are or what they truly are. I wanted to show all the nations of the Eastern Reach the machines we had used to create ourselves. How we had hidden our true nature from mortals for millennia. Bollocks, bollocks, nice and juicy, hairy bollocks. Uh, so yeah, going back, it's just, it goes back to the, uh, to the, uh, the gods on a real nonsense. So the game has, the first game, like, there's no other way of... I, I can't find another way of explaining it. There's an underlying assumption that a god who is not a demiurge is not a real god. Uh, specifically, the word is a real god. Um, and uh, you can't say it, the god isn't real, and, and pretend that you're saying that god isn't a real god, because those two sentences are not the same thing. And the game does multiple... The first game, and this game as well, uh, although the first game is, is more obvious... Uh, because it's like in the climax, does multiple mistakes in that regard, where uh, it, 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 it's just it's, there's the underlying assumption, and it, it, that's not a thing that's never established in this game. I, I wish I, it was so easy to establish it in this game, because 
like if you make the worship of each of these gods as the creator of the oceans, as the creator of the skies, as like being here before the Eora, or like th make that fundamental to the to their worship, then you would fix the problem, because you'd you'd make you'd you'd make the 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 you'd establish the precedent for these gods being worshipped as creators, as, as demiurges. Actually, demiurge means the whole creator, so they wouldn't, they would never be demiurges, because that's, uh, that's an oxymoron, you can't have multiples. You need to have one demiurge, otherwise it's a... Uh... I'm pretty sure there's a different name for partial creators, I'm not sure. I, I've, I've looked into this, uh, and yeah, so there's religions, uh, well, I, I say there's religions. I know there's one religion, and I don't know the name of that religion in real life, that have... Um, actually, I say, yeah, there's there, there's religions, because the Greek had similar things. I mention the Greek, Greeks every once in a while because it's the perfect analogy, and I've talked about this before. Um, but basically, where you have a god, and you also have another entity that created the world, either at the behest of god or before God existed, uh, the Greeks, the Greek gods were created by the demiurges. Actually, not quite like that, but it's sort of, sort of complicated. And I'm pretty sure there's multiple versions of it. And the Romans had similar situations. And it's like religion is a brilliant thing to talk uh, to talk about this stuff because you can just have all the things. You can just make up all the stuff, and it's lovely, and it's awesome. It's just fantastic. It's because it tells so much about the culture of, of the peoples and all that sort of stuff. That's great. If you're talking about in this game, obviously, or you're talking about a fantasy, uh, it, it's it's not religion. I mean, you can have religion in, in a fantasy, obviously, but this is not, we're not talking about a relig religion. We're talking about a, a historical fact that these gods were uh, created by the Inguithans. Um, so it's it's a fa it's fact. We're talking about history. We're talking about science or whatever we're doing. Right? Uh, that doesn't mean that religion doesn't exist. Doesn't, that doesn't mean that religious beliefs don't exist. They absolutely can and do exist in this world. But the point is, they are absolutely real. And the game is just sort of hang, hung up on that nonsense fact that these guys were created by machines. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. They are f the same people. It's like... It's like... Pretend the kings were... P pretend the ki people thought the kings did, like kings in a country. They don't poo. They don't poo. Kings don't poo, and queens don't poo. No, they don't poo. That's that's the thing. That's you know they're kings. They're they don't poo. Nobody asks too much about that. Don't ask. Um, and then all of a sudden, aha! Monarchy is the worst thing because the kings weren't. Look at their assholes. Well, look at that. It's all full of crap. Hey, they poo. This is all awful. And people will be like. Oh, well, I guess they poo. That, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> and it's the same thing. If people don't worship them, and it would be so so easy to fix. Oh, and I think it's just, they didn't think. They didn't think. And it irritates me so much. I, I can't wait until I'm done with this game so I can ask. I want to do an interview with Carrie Petal and with Josh Sawyer specifically about these. I don't know who came up with, I think it was Carrie that came up with the most of the um, gods, but anyway, continue. But even if I had succeeded, my words would have been easy to deny. Belief creates the foundation upon which a mind's reality is built. Some minds can never let go of that foundation. They would rather hold tight to the world in their mind than accept what they're being told. Yeah, I, I wish you kind of showed that belief. That would be so nice. That would be so nice. Anyway, um, we're out of time for the day. I I forget I forget some things. Like for example, the other day I was talking about the marriage thing. Marriage is not a central point of the game, and I guess you could argue uh, that uh, in making off off uh, offhand comments about oh these people don't even know what marriage is or something like that uh, are uh, is a little bit. Uh, out of place thematically speaking, and it is, and there's arguments to be made. My argument wasn't that the one, though. My argument was that the game didn't set up marriage as a um, as a societal um, reality of of the Deerwood. Uh, that's not that might be true for this game, uh, but the first game has it. There's people who are betrothed and people who are uh, married to other people. There's husbands and wives. Um, so that that is a reality in Deerwood. Uh, the thematic relevancy 
I thought was very heavy-handed, and it was just sort of the. But either way, I what I mean by that is that uh, I forget some things. I forget I forgot that thing about the marriage. There's people who are they oh my husband this or my wife that, in the first game at the very least. Um, so I forget, and maybe I'm forgetting. Maybe I'm forgetting that maybe that the game has has uh, set up that people do indeed believe these gods are gods because they created things or because they are immortal or they are immortal aren't they like doesn't mean they can't be killed I, i'm not really sure what the word means itself immortal but either way maybe i forget let me know in the comments what you feel about this because this is like the where my brain works the hardest for this game and i love it i love it so for right now i'm Colonel rpg and this has been pills of eternity 2 i really hope you've enjoyed it and if you did go ahead and leave a comment like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later but above all thank you so much for watching and i hope i'll see you next episode Bye-bye.